Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to the video. This is going to be episode six of the Baja front suspension build. And in this video, we're going to be making the upper control arms for the front suspension. Now, like with most of my videos, what we're looking at here is about a culmination of two weeks of me kind of setting things up and getting to the point where I am now. So let me take you for a quick little run through as to what I've done so far. First thing I had to do is, if you saw the last video, I installed the shock tower on the last video. I've since added this tube just to give it a little bit more rigidity. But then I installed the tab mounts down here for the upper control arm. And in all of my other videos, I've been whining and complaining about the fitment through here between the shock absorber and the steering shaft. And at this point, you guys can finally see what I'm talking about. I've got the Himes are going to come in here for the upper control arm. They have to steer clear of this steering shaft so that I couldn't go too far back with them this way because I had to steer clear of this. And the upper control arm has to come this way and then make a tight turn and come in here so that it clears the shock absorber. And we can actually go over to this Baja and I can show you what I'm talking about because this Baja had the exact same thing. So if you look in here, this is the upper control arm. Everything on this chassis is a little bit smaller, but this control arm comes in. The tabs are here. They couldn't go any further back because the control arm would hit the steering shaft. There's, there's actually only like half an inch of clearance down in there. And then the upper control arm has to be coped out like this to clear the shock absorber. This is gonna be very similar to the layout of the other chassis. So in order to help me lay this out, the first thing I did is I made this piece, which these, these have the bungs welded in there for the Himes. And I welded it on this piece of steel because it made it much easier for me to take all my measurements. If I could take this piece and I installed the Himes in there and I had temporarily clamped some tabs on there and then I was able to actually put this in place, which basically simulated this end of the control arm. And then once I had that, I had a clamp and a level set up on my spindle here so that I could get it set up exactly where it needs to be with zero camber and running in the same plane as the control arm which is kicked back seven degrees. And then at that point I was basically able to just take all of my measurements for the connection point here up to the connection point for the at the chassis end. And basically in doing all that I was able to come up with this which I drew up in Bentec and then I printed it out and put it on some foam board paper. And then I was actually able to come out here and kind of put this in place and make sure that everything seems to fit. Now since I did do this in Bentec, I didn't do the lower control arms in Bentec. I did those freehand, but I will transfer those to Bentec. And this is already in Bentec, so I'll put a link in the description uh, to my shared folder and you can go to the shared folder and you can download this and what I'll do is I'll have the Bentec file so that you guys if you have Bentec you can print this exact piece out or I'll try to put a bitmap in there that just has most of the uh, dimensions so that you can actually lay it out and make your own if you want to I figure if since there's quite a few people who have downloaded the spindle and there's a lot of people who have downloaded the chassis it might be easy for a lot of people to actually download the control arms too if they're kind of following along and building this same build. Anyways, once I had this and I had all my dimensions, then I was able to make another template. Let's take this off. I was able to make a template just like I did for the lower control arm and then just fab up, you know, the pieces to fit in there using the blocks of wood as as you know spacers things to hold it in place this holds the back piece this holds the front piece and then most importantly regardless of where these blocks are I laid out exactly what I need this control arm to be on the wood here so I've got this is the center point for the spindle connection this is the center line and these all carry themselves back so that when I lay this out, I can make sure that I'm staying 
perfect with the dimensions that I need. So at that point, I already had the foam board control arm piece right there. And then I had, let's call it the guts of the lower control arm. Then I put in the dimensions to the uh, CNC plasma cutter. And then I cut out the upper and lower control arm plates. And if I'm being 100% honest with you guys, which I always am, when I cut this, these out on the CNC plasma cutter, I actually did run into a couple of issues with the plasma cutter since this was the largest, most intricate piece I had cut out yet. I found out that I think the plasma cutter is getting, or the CNC cutter is getting a little bit of interference from the high frequency plasma cutter. So it caused over time my measurements to, uh, let's say, deviate a little bit, about an eighth of an inch. So it made it, it made this top plate inaccurate enough that I can't just lay it right on here and tack everything in place like I did the lower control arms. But what I can do, because the most important part is that the spindle connection point and the chassis connection point are right on the dimensions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that all of these pieces are lined up with their lines, this piece and the spindle connection point pieces. And then I'm going to put the control arm on here and I'm going to tack these in place. I'll weld in my rosettes here because this, this quarter inch piece follows all the way down to here. And I'll tack this in place. And then at that point, this control arm plate will actually hold this and this square to each other and where they need to be. Then I'll take this off of the jig and then I can tack weld all these places in. Because if you see right now, I've pretty much got it where it needs to be. And everything's about an eighth of an inch off. Like this needs to be shifted down about an eighth of an inch. So I can easily just kind of tack those freehand without the jig. That won't affect anything because these will be squared up. And then the bottom plate has the same offsets as this one. So when I flip this over and tack on the other piece, everything should, should end up just fine. But either way, I think I've brought you guys up to speed. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna set up the time-lapse camera and take some video of me tacking all of this stuff together. I'm not gonna solid weld anything. I'm just gonna tack it all up. And then hopefully, when I got that all tacked up, we'll actually come back and install it on the chassis and see how it fits. All right, guys, take a look at that. I've got the control arm bolted in in place. It's not totally permanent. These are not welded on yet. They're just clamped in there. And I don't have any actual spacers in here, so there's actually some room for slop. And being completely honest, this upper control arm 
kicked my butt a little bit. I'm not sure why. Maybe it was because I tried using the the CNC plasma cutter, which you know I'm still tweaking that. But it was a little bit more difficult to form up and tack together this upper control arm than it was the lower control arm. Another difference is I'm starting to think I may have overbuilt this upper control arm, maybe. I'm not sure. I mean, I'm designing this for 33 to 35 inch tires, so that's that's going to put it under a lot of stress, but um, it's pretty heavy. The side plates are eighth inch. It's one and three quarters of an inch thick. The top plate is eighth inch, and the bottom plate is eighth inch. The lower control arm is the same. This one is inch and three quarters thick, eighth inch top, bottom, and side plates, but maybe because this one doesn't really have anything here and this one this one does have a lot of meat here quite a bit of meat because it it kind of has this spine running through here as well because I had to keep this so strong coming through here because you know there's gonna be so much force going on here I think having all this and all this meat over here has made this control arm a little bit heavier than the lower but either way I'm I don't really care it's just it came out a lot heavier than I expected it to but everything bolts up good it's got all the correct tolerances it puts the spindle where it needs to be um, it can cycle from full droop to full compression let's let's do that right now <laughs> you can see here in full droop which this is awesome by the way just seeing everything that I've been working on this far. If you guys remember videos back when this was just a you know fiberboard and foam board concept, when you get to this point and you're actually seeing these conceptual things come together and actually work is uh, is really cool. I mean you can see how the upper and lower arms are almost perfectly parallel. The steering arm is is tucked in there with just enough clearance everywhere, still keeping its its uh, bump steer in check. Because you can see, I just I just dropped that to full droop, and the the steering didn't change at all. It's still completely centered, so that's awesome. It's got just enough cut out here to clear the shock absorber, which obviously I don't want to have to cut more out of there than I need for clearance pur for strength purposes. I can tell you the steering rack there just kind of starts to touch a little bit. That's not a problem, but it's definitely something that I didn't consider. Um, but this is full droop unstrapped, and when I, in the real world, this is going to be strapped probably two inches less than what it's going right now, so that, that won't really be a problem because at, at this full droop here, this heim is just starting to bind on the, the steering arm there. But as far as the geometry, it's all true and everything so far is, is what I designed it to be. And it appears that everything clears. So let's take it to full compression. Full compression is a bit of a challenge because at full compression I have to compress the spring a little bit, which is a little bit of an extra challenge. And all this stuff now, the spindle, the upper control arm, lower control arm, is actually pretty heavy. So even if the shock absorber wasn't on there, you're actually lifting up quite a bit of weight at this point. A lot more, all the components are a lot beefier and bigger than that Baja, so everything on this chassis is uh, substantially heavier. But anyways, at full compression here, um, this is as high as it would go, and just like at full droop, I'm right at the point where the, the steering is starting to bind on the steering arm. It's still holding its geometry correct. It hasn't suffered any bump steer that I can see, and it is still clearing the shock absorber, which is good. Now that I have the upper control arm in here, ooh, this is still warm. Feels good because this garage is cold. 
now that I have this upper control arm, I can start figuring out where I'm going to put my bump stop. Probably somewhere around here so that I can tie into here and there, but I'll, I'll figure that out for the next video. The next video is going to be bump stops and limiting straps. And I also have a sneaking suspicion that some of this might interfere with the one piece front end, but I'll trim the front end if needed. I'm not going to modify the suspension so that it clears the fiberglass. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Uh, I'm getting super excited. I know lately I've been saying that after every video, but like I said earlier, as your designs and your hard work actually starts to come together, even though this chassis has a long way to go before I'm actually driving it because it has nothing in the rear, but it's so exciting when your pieces start going together and coming out like your design. And when you get to pieces that you can move around and blah, 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 it's just, if you're building a project like this, as it starts to evolve, it gets really exciting. Uh, I got some things coming down the line for this channel. I think I'm really close to buying a really good transmission for this cha this chassis. I don't. I didn't want to put a bus transmission in this chassis like the other Baja has because I want this uh, I want this Baja to be able to run an LS if necessary. And if I am running an Ecotec in it, I really want to be able to give that Ecotec everything that it's got. So I really want to be able to push this chassis a lot farther than the chassis with just the bus transmission. Like I said earlier, the next video is going to be bump stops and limiting straps. So this week I'll tack together the other upper control arm, get that put in place, and then I'll start figuring out how I'm going to do the uh, bump stops and limit straps so we can have that. But either way, guys, Thanks for watching the video. I hope you guys are enjoying this stuff as much as I am. I'm trying to explain as much of it to you as I can without getting, you know, too boring. Uh, but either way, I hope they're helping you with your builds, whatever you might be working on, and I hope to see you on the next video. Take care.